If a rogue doctor swears by a treatment that is not recognized by the medical community, here's why the skeptics who shake their heads are usually right. You don't need to be a scientist to understand this, just keep your eyes on the prize and don't lose your marbles. Each marble represents a positive scientific result, a published aha moment that looks promising. Biomedical research often starts with in vitro studies. These studies use cells grown in petri dishes and flasks, being exposed to different drugs, for example. Lots of people do them, so lots of positive results are published in the scientific literature. This is interesting, seeing how cells react to a new intervention in a petri dish is a start, but it doesn't tell us anything about the intervention's effect on tissues or organs or organisms. These promising in vitro findings have to then prove their worth in animals. Because of the limitations of the in vitro model, some of these findings don't make it. They don't translate to an animal model, but some do. Now, rats are great, but uh, they're not human beings. So we take the findings that have held up so far, and we test them in humans in phase one clinical trials. Once again, some don't make it. The purpose of phase one trials is to assess the safety of the intervention and to report on immediate side effects. We keep going like this, losing more findings as we move from phase one to phase two human trials, where we'll test effectiveness against a placebo. And we lose some more when we go to phase three, where we compare to standard of care. This is the finding that runs that gauntlet and makes it out alive. It was not only true for cells in a dish, but held true for animal models, then for human beings. The benefits outweighed its risks, and it did better than what we had so far. This single promising avenue is now part of common practice. Everything else was a false positive. It doesn't matter how shiny it was, it didn't work when we got closer and closer to real human beings in real life situations. This gauntlet is crucial. It should not be bypassed because it is our first line of defense against unsafe and ineffective interventions. So of course some people bypass it. If I pluck this in vitro finding and artificially put it in this container, would you use it? What are the chances that that early finding would successfully run that gauntlet? Very small. And yet that is exactly what quacks do when they take an early research finding and sell you a product based solely on that. Rogue doctors bypass the system of proofing, not at their risk, but at yours. At best, you waste your money. At worst, you experience severe side effects. If you're wondering whether or not a new treatment that has not been adopted by the medical community has potential, and the person pushing it shows you a scientific paper proving its worth, check the materials and methods section. Was this done on cells, on rats, on zebrafish? That's not enough. Hey, uh, did you like the video? Uh, would you like to see more? Subscribe to our channel, uh, The Body of Evidence, and go to our website as well. This is how you help us get famous.